This is the last session. Tonight, uh, you made your uh, vases and uh, bottle toppers and ball catchers, and we put finishes on the vases and the bottle toppers. And tonight, we're gonna show you how to polish them, how to buff them up so that they're nice and smooth and put a nice final wax finish on them. In addition to that, we're gonna go over some maintenance, what I refer to as maintenance, but it's actually a way to keep your, your uh, lathe bed clean and your uh, tool rest smooth so that it, your turning experience is easier. One of the problems that we run into and I see a lot of people struggling with is they go to move the banjo around and it sticks, it won't move. Uh, this bed isn't that bad, but uh, I've seen people struggle with this and it just won't move. And usually the reason is that the bed has gotten dirty. Someone has put a finish on on the lathe or they turned green wood where they got uh, moisture on the lathe and it may be slightly rusted, but, and it could be a, a finish or glue so if you're having a problem moving the, the uh, banjo, uh, don't struggle with it. The best thing to do is uh, get yourself some WD-40 and go ahead and spray the, the rails. And then using a fine stone or about a 600 grit sandpaper, just go ahead and clean the beds. Rub the beds up with the oil. and the stone. A little bit of elbow grease, doesn't take much. And wipe the excess off. And then you can use just a regular, like a three-in-one oil or if you have available uh, material that's called Slip It. It just keeps the uh, bed nice and clean and slippery and keeps your, uh, keeps your banjo and tool on your tailstock moving nice and smoothly along the rails. It'll just slide right over now. All right, the second thing you might wanna do is uh, if you're having your trouble with the quill coming in and out, it may be a little bit dirty, or it may need a little lubrication. Just give it a little shot of WD-40, work it in and out a bit, and that'll take care of that roughness, okay? Okay, from time to time you may have trouble with anything that has a moist taper, seating properly either in the quill or in the drive center. Most times it's just a buildup of sawdust and debris or dirt that, that have gotten in there. There's this little cleaning tool. It's just a nylon uh, twisted uh, tapered piece of plastic. Uh, and all you have to do is make sure the quill is out far enough and just take this in here and just ream out that taper a bit and it'll take off any of the dirt or anything that's in there and then your your taper whatever you're using will uh, fit in there much better and just do both ends this is one thing a lot of people don't realize that uh, it may cause a problem with you being off center slightly or not seating properly so it takes a couple of seconds clean it out and you're good to go all right. Okay, with the lathes, we have uh, usually it comes with one tool rest, and they are normally they're made out of cast iron. They can get little nicks and dings in them, and that catches your tool as you're trying to slide across. So, we're going to show you tonight how to clean this up so that your tool moves nice and smoothly across the tool rest. We also have aftermarket tool rest that have these round bar at the top. Now this is not carbon steel. These are case hardened steel and they usually don't get dinged up or scratched in any way. Uh, the only problem you'll ever have with these is maybe somebody glued something and they may leave, leave a residue behind. 
All you have to do is scrape that off and you're good to go. This doesn't need anything more than that. The cast iron tool rest needs a bit more. And this again, this is something you can do fairly quickly. Just set it up, lock it in place, and just, you have to go crazy. You just want to get the rough spots off, file them lightly. If you're ever here when we have a demonstrator, the pros, when they get here early, this is one of the first things they do <coughs> before they start anything. They'll take our tool rest and clean it up, either on a grinder or with a file, so that their tools slide nice and easily without jerkiness. That's it, that's all it takes. A couple of minutes of cleaning. And you can hit a little bit with a little oil. Also, on the bed or on the tool, on the tool rest, you can use a, a wax, or a carnauba wax, or paste wax, or anything that'll keep it nice and smooth and, and sliding nice and easily. That's it. All right, now the, the last final step of your, your piece is polishing. You'll get a nice finish on it and it feels great. But if you run it through a polishing system, when you're done, it's going to be a lot smoother. It gives you a nice, beautiful finish on it, okay? Um, it's a three-step system. It's called the Beale system, B-E-A-L-L-E. -E. It consists of three parts. The first part is Tripoli. Again, this is a little bit aggressive. That goes on this wheel. You buff it with that first. Second step is Tripoli. It's more of a polish. It's a finer abrasive, and you finish file up with that. The final step is a very hard carnauba wax. The uh, buffy wheel applies it to your workpiece, and you have a beautiful, nice, smooth wax finish. So this is done. This has a number two Morse taper that goes in the drive center. And then you want to bring your tailstock up with a pyramid type around live center to hold it in place. You don't want to try doing this without that because this thing can come flying out on you. All right, so this is good to go. Now, speed. Uh, I like to run the speed around five or 600 RPMs. Uh, that fans the, the, uh, the buffing wheels out a bit. It gives you better contact. But if you get something that's got a little rough spot on it and you might want a little more aggressive, by increasing the speed, you compress the fibers and it gets a bit more aggressive. But you have to be careful with that so you don't go get too aggressive and go through your finish. All right, so I'm gonna bring this up to, uh, there's about 580. Uh, we're gonna polish this up. So I'm going to start again with the Tripoli. Now you don't need an awful lot. Some people really load this up. Just a little bit, just to get some Tripoli on the wheels. And then you can go ahead and start the buffing. What's really important is that you hold on. To, go ahead, go ahead, keep on buffing. But make sure that you hold on very securely so that it doesn't go flying. This wheel can grab the, your piece and send it in that direction. If nobody's there, it's not a big deal. You're not gonna hurt anybody. However, you may damage your piece so that you have to redo it or break it. So it's important you really hold on to that. So, now this tool, this uh, buffing system can be used on flat work too. It doesn't necessarily, is not just limited to turn pieces. Anything flat that will fit between the wheels and the bed here. Lengthwise is a plus. And I don't know if you still notice, I shouldn't have held it up, but uh, there it's buffed, but not polished yet. See, it's a little cloudy-like, little rough. So the next step is the white diamonds. Again, 
It doesn't take a whole lot, just a little bit. And I'll show you what this, the difference with the speed. You notice when I do this, the uh, buffing wheel fans out, gives you a nice buffing action. And you can see the difference here already between this and this. And if I increase the speed, you see the fibers compress and then this becomes a lot more aggressive. But I don't want that. All I wanted to do is to buff it up. So I want the speed down, that's about 1600. I want the speed down around five, 600. And we fan out and get a nice buffing motion to it, or action. Again, can't cost you enough. Make sure you hold on. All right, so that's buffed up. It's nice and smooth. And the last step would be the carnauba wax. And this I hold on a little bit more, get a little more generous with it. I want to get as much wax as I can. Transfer to my vase, my workpiece. That's it. All buffed up and ready to go. The uh, three wheel system on that one shaft uh, may be a little cumbersome for you. If your piece is a little bit bigger, you need a little bit more working space, you may want to do this uh, with one buffing wheel at a time. Uh, so in order to do that, to hold just one wheel, we have a couple of different ways to do this. The first is with this apparatus here. This has a number two Morse taper on it and the buffing wheel just screws into the front. A word of caution with this, if you're using this uh, holder, you must use this, it's called a draw bar. The back end of the shaft is, is uh, tapped to a quarter 20, quarter inch, 20 threads per inch with this rod is inserted into. What this does, this draws this in so that it cannot come flying out of the headstock. So to use this, you insert it in the, in the drive, and tighten up the wheel in the back, and now this cannot come out. That bar holds it in place. And then you can select whatever wheel you want. This is Tripoli. You just go ahead and turn it in, and then it's good to go. All right, the one thing that you should not do, if you don't have a drawer, drawer bar, uh, and even if you do have it, uh, some people have a tendency to go ahead and bring the tailstock up, but this is not a good idea uh, because uh, it can damage the screw and it also wears down the live center, it puts marks in it, so kind of re refrain from that. That's why you use the draw bar. There's a third way to hold the, your uh, buffing wheel in place, and that's with the use of a chuck. All right, so this is a, a 50 millimeter chuck, a 25 millimeter, no, 50 millimeter chuck. I'll be all right. It's a 50 millimeter chuck mounted on the lathe, and then this adapter is made so that you can hold it in the center portion of the chuck. So you just insert it here, tighten up. And then go ahead and add your polishing wheels as we've done before. And this gives you a little more space between the headstock and your workpiece gives you a little bit larger pieces to work with. So one of these may be more advantageous over the other, depending on your piece, all right? And if you still need extra room, if you're doing something that's pretty wide and you don't have enough of room, there's one more thing you can do. You can take an adapter, a shaft adapter, extender, I should say, and you're gonna install this, then the chuck, And that allows you even further space between the headstock and the polishing heads. So there's uh, 
Three different ways that you can uh, uh, use the Beal system and uh, three different ways of holding and one with an extension. So, and that's it.